Ryan Garcia is coming off one of the most successful events in boxing history when he fought Gervonta Tank Davis on April 22nd. It wasn't as fortunate as he would have liked though as he lost by a 7th round body shot that he couldn't continue from. Before and after the fight, media and critics raised the question, did he even deserve to be there in the first place? The reasoning against could be because Tank is one of the biggest pay-per-view stars in boxing, a former world champion who has beat decent names across three divisions. He is also one of the hardest punchers in the sport, as only one man has gone the 12 round distance with him in his 29 fight pro career. So how did Garcia get this shot? Let's break down the resume. King Ryan was a 15 time national amateur champion and had over 200 fights before turning pro in 2016. Leading up to his first real step up in 2018 against the experienced Fernando Vargas, Garcia had done exactly what people want prospects to do, going through the ranks, put on entertaining, charismatic performances that result in highlight reel knockouts. I see both guys now having these moments. Oh, how quick was that? Going into the Vargas fight, he was 13-0 with 12 KOs. His opponent had 48 fights at the time, some of them coming against guys who went on to fight for world titles. Garcia wasted no time picking up KO number 13, though. And from Ryan Garcia, as the school of the left hook puts him down as his head bounces off the canvas. His next fight was an even bigger step up against Jason Velez, a man who had been in the ring with future world champions. This time, Garcia went 10 rounds for the first time, outboxing Velez for almost the entirety of the fight, losing only one round on all three judges' scorecards. After this fight, Garcia had outgrown 130 pounds and moved up to lightweight. He rattled off a few more wins and a couple more stoppages before having his first real test at the new weight. That came against Romero Duno, who was 21-1 with 16 KOs. But once again, Garcia made it look easy. I shook Duno. Garcia able to land that right now. He's down, he goes. Right hand and a hook, and Duno is hurt. Duno is hurt bad. He then fought world title challenger Francisco Fonseca and did the same thing to him. His lightning fast hands and clear one punch power lined himself up against his toughest test to date against Luke Campbell for an interim lightweight strap. Campbell had been in the ring and went the distance with Vasily Lomachenko and Jorge Linares. If Garcia could win this fight, he was directly in line for a shot at the WBC world title, which was held by Devin Haney at the time. Under six minutes into the fight, Garcia was faced with his first real test of adversity. His first time being knocked down, Garcia showed a lot of resilience, hopping right back into the fight with Campbell, pushing the action and eventually stopping him with a devastating body shot in the seventh. That made him the first person to finish off Campbell before the final bell. Unfortunately for Garcia, he wasn't able to get that world title shot as he was dealing with injuries and mental health problems for the next year or so. When he returned, he moved up to 140 and beat Emmanuel to go and stop former champion Javier Fortuna. Next was Davis. So, looking at Garcia's resume from a detailed stroke, he was on the doorstep of a world title at one time and had dusted some decent names along the way. Add the fact that the tank fight was at a catch weight, there is certainly an argument to be made that Garcia did earn his shot and his millions of social media followers didn't hurt. All of this, especially when you consider who Davis has actually fucked. But that's the resume for another day.